So the exclusive producer of the upcoming Witcher series on Netflix has recently responded to some of the complaints the audience had about the casting of the show. And now that I've finished the first three books, I think I'm well enough equipped to tell you why at least some of what she said is nonsense, in my opinion. Before I begin though, let me point out that some of the criticism she was responding to was fairly mean and I would like to encourage you guys to be a little less offensive. Um, I know you feel strongly about these things and so do I, but let's have some common decency here. Actually, even I, in my previous video about The Witcher show, had to delete quite a few comments because while some of them made decent points, they were buried so deep beneath insults and bad language and... Well, you get the point. Okay, so let's have a look at what she has said. She talks about how racism in The Witcher is not about skin color and it all leads up to her final sentence where she says, in the books, no one pays attention to skin color. In the series, no one does either. Period. Well, I disagree. Emphatically. Here's the thing. You don't need to go too far into the books to notice just how much attention is paid to detail. And not just any detail, but the kind that makes characters different, the kind that makes them unique and allows them to stand out among the rest. It is true that there is little talk about skin color, but that's simply because it's fairly obvious that everyone has more or less the same skin color. However, if someone has a particularly pale skin, or freckles, or tattoos, or scars, or even a particular eye color, or hair color, or hairstyle, or maybe notable features of their physique, and other details like that, those are immediately mentioned and paid attention to and then they are constantly emphasized and referred to as the character makes more and more appearances. All of these features I mentioned are never there for purely cosmetic reasons. They always add something to the characters, to the way they see themselves or to the way others treat them. Um, for example, there's not a scene with Yennefer that doesn't mention at least some of her unique features, her deep violet eyes, contrasting on her pale face, her cold and dispassionate gaze, her beauty, all these fit very well with her personality and are constantly acknowledged by everyone else. People often notice Geralt's long white hair, his uh, unusual appearance, the fact that he's a mutant, either in terms of his looks or in reference to him being unable to experience emotions. What I want. <laughs> um, and those are often the reason why he's treated poorly. Triss Merigold is very feminine. She has luscious hair, big breasts, and um, other than trying to seduce Geralt with them, um, she also assists Ciri in some womanly matters, which, you know, ties everything in neatly. What else? Dijkstra takes advantage of his appearance as a giant oaf to conceal his intellect, which is the polar opposite of the way he looks. Um, the Zeracanian girls, for example, speak in a peculiar way. And up until this point, actually, the books don't really pay much attention to language because everyone speaks the same one. And so it's not really worth mentioning, much like the skin color. However, in their case, it enhances their foreign... Um, vibe? Also, unlike any other women in the books, so far at least, there is an emphasis on their physical fitness, which later makes sense based on what we learn about their culture, and afterwards they... Uh, come up to aid Saskia's dad and face a bunch of people on their own. So it's all there for a reason. Yeah, I'm probably boring you at this point. Boring as fucking shite. But I just want to stress how adding, say, a black character, a black fringilla, for example, in the middle of this story, in the middle of this world, and have nobody pay any attention to her skin color and act as though she's no different in any way is actually very much against the spirit of the books, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I even took the liberty of cheating a little bit and skipped ahead to read up about Fringilla, you know, so I have an idea what I'm talking about, and I gotta say, unless they change her involvement in the story, her being black will not add anything to her character and in fact it will subtract from it. It would be weird to see her go to Tucson and use the fact that she is Anna Henrietta's cousin to her advantage, 
while nobody bats an eye or gets suspicious or even makes any mention of the fact that she looks nothing like the Duchess. Or when Geralt sleeps with her and calls her Yennefer occasionally. So here's the thing once again. In the world of The Witcher, as described by the books, in my opinion, at least from reading the first three, that which makes a character unique and different matters. Every such trait has a purpose, every defining feature is there for a reason, and not simply because why not? The producer also talked about how they picked the best actors, and in that case, I think they should have perhaps created a new character for this woman, um, embrace the fact that she is different from the rest, and perhaps even turn it to her advantage. Or if she is indeed perfectly suited to be Frangilla Vigo, then her character, I think, should be changed accordingly to accommodate for that change in appearance. And who knows, they could make her even more interesting this way. Alright, now uh, let's look at another thing Lauren Hisrich, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, has said. And I must admit I'm a little confused here. She said, We're making the show for nearly 200 countries. In all creative adaptations, changes are made with the audience in mind. In the video games, Geralt and the Witchers have American accents. That's not what it was in the books. But the developers wisely knew that they should appeal to a broader base. Where do I start with this one? I guess from the beginning. This comes after she talked about inclusivity, so I'm assuming they're trying to say that they include, for example, black actors in the show to appeal to a wider audience in these nearly 200 countries, right? On one hand, I'm not entirely convinced this is how things work. Black Fringilla, for example, will suddenly make black people all over the world, you know, in these 200 countries to suddenly get interested. I don't know, I urge any black people who are watching to comment and share their thoughts on this. And on the other hand, there are so many Asian people out there. They gotta be more numerous than all the black people and all the white people combined. So how is that reflected in the cast of main characters? So far, I don't think there's a single one in them. And now for the rest of the statement, where in the video games, the Witchers have American accents, which is not how it was in the books, but the developers did it to appeal to a wider audience. This may come as a surprise to some, but in the world of The Witcher there is no England, or America, or English language, or any of its accents. I certainly doubt that the Polish writer had a particular brand of English accent in mind when creating Geralt, Vesemir, Eskel, Lambert and so on. She's probably referring to a specific set of audiobooks in English where Geralt does indeed have some form of British accent. But that's a personal creative choice of the producers of the audiobooks. You can't say that that's how the original books were meant to be. If anyone who's watching has any evidence that the writer of the books has stated anywhere that Geralt should have, or rather should not have, an American accent, please let me know. And as for the idea that giving the Witcher's American accents equals appealing to a broader audience, I just don't get it. I've made a lot of videos about Dragon Age Inquisition, and it seems mostly everyone prefers having the British voice acting rather than the American one. For those of you who don't know, you can choose between the two when you make your character. I can give you another example, probably even better, Star Wars The Old Republic. Once again, I've made so many videos about that game back when I started on YouTube, and I'm convinced that the Sith Warrior and Sith Inquisitor classes are the most popular among the community of players, and both of them have British accents. So the idea that gamers prefer American-sounding protagonists or something is one that I, as a lifelong gamer, cannot relate to at all. And by the way, most of my viewers on whose opinions I'm basing these statements are actually from the United States, so I don't know what else to say here. And finally, I'd like to address her point about the Slavic spirit. She said, The books are Polish and packed with Slavic spirit. It was important to keep that same tone in our show. With that in mind, I asked around, especially to Polish friends, can the Slavic culture be reduced solely down to skin color? The answer was resounding. God, we hope not. Now, I do not identify myself too strongly as a Slavic person. I am Bulgarian and ethnically we 
tend to have a little darker hair and darker eye colors compared to the more, let's say, hardcore Slavic people. Like, for example, the Polish, or the Russians, or the Slovaks, and so on. But culturally, we are fairly Slavic. And besides, there's a piece of The Witcher 3's soundtrack that is in Bulgarian. You know, the one, uh, what was it? Yamu Mata Gudete, Yamum Chetu Genete? So I guess I'm qualified to talk about it. I don't know, it's it's like asking whether British culture can be reduced only to the fact that British people live on an island. Certainly that's not the sole reason for them being what they are today, but it must have played some part in it. So I guess the same goes for Slavic people. And ultimately, if the question is posed this way, I guess the answer is no. People of any color can just as easily understand that uh, witches live in houses poised atop chicken legs. All normal folk know that witches live in gingerbread houses poised atop chicken legs. I'll have to see that to believe it. I think she asked it in this way because she wanted to get the answer she was looking for. And I'm not really sure where we're going with this, especially due to the fact that The Witcher itself is not exclusively based on Slavic culture and fantasy and folklore and so on. It is certainly more Slavic than say, The Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, but it too draws inspiration from more traditionally Western things. And this is true not just for the games, but for the books as well. So that's all I had to say, I think. I rambled a bit and I hope I made some sense. Let me know what you think of all this, especially if you're a black person or perhaps one of the hardcore Slavic people as I defined them. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support. And until the next video. Stay tuned and be good. Hey, Philippa, I wanted to ask you about... What do you want? Sorry, I, I just wanted to hear your thoughts about how Netflix is handling The Witcher show. <sighs> there are those who keep politics separate from their private lives, and those who do not. And which are they? The more boring of the two.